to one another again. I am launching a massive service organization called Mercury One. It will be there that I will make my stand and I will ask others to join me in service of their fellow human beings. I don't know about you, but I've heard enough from politicians. I have heard enough I have heard enough promises broken. I have felt betrayed time and time again by people that I trusted you. It's my goal to find people of fewer words and more action. People that don't want to sit around and talk about the problem. I'm tired of talking about the problem. Let's find the exit and the way out and go through that door and build something positive in nature. Some action that makes a real and lasting difference. Action that does not necessarily change the political landscape the next election, but action that changes a man's heart forever. That's the way we will restore our nation. Hate is growing on a planetary scale. I don't know anybody that will say that from the rooftops, but we have to shout that from the rooftops, that hate is growing on a planetary scale. Warning! There is darkness beyond anything that we have seen in our lifetimes. Sorry, Jack. Maybe except for Jack. <laughs> hate that is growing beyond anything that we have seen. For the first time in the history of mankind, it is global. And when it happens, it will happen that fast. Believe in the protection and beseech the protection of divine providence. If you are... And you don't say this one line or one similar, please, please, Lord, please, stay in your hand, please, recognize how many good people there are. I don't think you understand the depth of the trouble that is coming our way. On July 2nd, July 2nd, 2009, my chalkboard and I, warned the nation of the coming insurrection. I said the left would coordinate massive demonstrations and there would be riots in the street of Europe and America. July 2nd, 2009. Two years ago in February, I said that unions would organize the teachers who would then organize their students to march that's 12 months before Wisconsin. At the same time, I warned that SEIU would organize those to stand and stay in the streets and cause chaos in Wall Street. We found out through an extraordinarily brave employee of mine who infiltrates and records we found out and exposed last spring that it is SEIU that is organizing the Occupy Wall Street debacle. And they're doing it and promising that it is going to come to Chicago, to Boston, to Los Angeles, to San Francisco. Van Jones said, brace yourself because it's coming all over the country. Do not dismiss these people. They've waited decades for this opportunity. SEIU is one of the many forces that have organized this. I warn you now that the violent left will be in the streets. 
They will tear our streets down. They will try everything they can to cripple us, to bankrupt our cities, and it will grow en masse in power and destructive force as we close on this election. Trouble, my friend, is coming. And it will be global in nature. Millions all over the world will be taught to hate and taught to destroy. If we wish to survive, We must turn our world upside down in our own personal lives before it is turned upside down for us. I said a year ago, spit yourself out of the system if you can. People still don't know what that means. Quite honestly, I'm not sure what that means either. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I left Fox. I am not a part of a network I am not a part of anybody else's anything. I am independent. I stand by myself. I don't owe a man a dime. I do what I can with what I have. We work hard. We stay on our knees. We're out of the system. Now what, Lord? Now what? Redesign the system. I'm currently in the midst in my business, and I'm only telling you this because you're going to have to figure it out what it means on your business, in your life. But I'm trying to redesign my entire company to be the complete opposite of what everyone says it should be. Believe me, you have no idea what it's like even in my own company to sit with people and tell them, this is what we're doing next. Are you crazy, Glenn? You know what? We're both going to find out one of these days, aren't we? <laughs> you pray on it, and you search your heart and your soul every second of the day, and you listen and obey. Whatever he tells you to do, do it unless he's telling you to blow people up. <laughs> then it's probably a guy who sounds like this who's telling you to do it. <laughs> you do it. We must be a force for good. The reason why I'm telling you to turn your own world upside down and to change your thinking in everything is because there's going to come a time when America will have a choice, I intend on being a choice, a path for others. I intend on showing others you do not have to go down the hatred road. You do not have to go down the road of tearing each other apart, setting cities on fire, looking for revenge. Don't do it as much as you might want to, as easy as it might sound. Don't do it. Be a force for good. We need to be active, and we need to be visible, and we need to be beyond politics. Politics is a byproduct of who we are. Who are we? And who are you? We must be people who love, heal, build, and serve. We will give America a choice when they are facing death. Let us offer life. When they are facing evil, let us offer good. When they are, when they are offered slavery, let us offer freedom. When you're in a group such as this, I ask you to look around at everybody in the room and everybody that you've heard you cannot be neutral anymore. You can't say, well, I think that guy's kind of dangerous, but get away from him. Look in the room and ask, who are we? Do we build up or do we tear down? 